Chords, chords, chords. That's what we're talking about in today's video. So if you've been playing the piano for a little while, then you already know chords are a vital part of the whole process. However, I know playing chords for beginner pianists is sometimes a little tricky and they're not really sure where to start. Well, you're in luck today because in today's video, I'm gonna show you the best way to practice piano chords that makes sure that you can do it the right way every single time. By the way, it's Josh at Piano Frenzy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. We're doing some awesome things here. So before you can have any success with playing chords at the piano, you have to understand what the diatonic notes of the scale are. So I'll go over diatonics right now so you know exactly what I mean. So before you can start playing piano chords, you need to understand diatonic scales or diatonic chords. Now diatonic means derived from, and each diatonic scale has seven notes in it consisting of five whole steps and two half steps. C major is the easiest one to get to, right? Because it's all white keys. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Within that were the five whole steps and the two half steps. Now, if you're not comfortable with scale finger, you can simply poke these notes out with your index finger. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now that we understand the notes that we need, we know which notes we can actually use to form any of our chords. In this case, they'll all be white keys. So I will just simply put finger one on the C, finger three on the E, right? And then finger five on the G, and I'll play all of those three notes down at the same time. That's your first chord. So your first exercise can simply be going up one key at a time, doing the same fingering, fingers one, three, and five. So here's an example. Then you go up, and up, 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 and then one last time. Once you're comfortable doing that with one of your hands, I would encourage you to try to start putting both hands together now doing the same thing. So the left hand's gonna get its own C chord and your right hand will have its own C chord and they'll move up the piano and down the piano the same way. So here's an example of that. Then up. To get a better feel for the notes in the chord and those fingers that one, three, and five, I actually would break the notes apart like so. And then just keep going up. You can also do this going down. So I'll actually start up here and just go backwards starting with these fingers. Now let's say I switched this to D major and wanted to try a different sort of scale for this. I would need these notes. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. So now I know when I form my chords, F sharp and C sharp may have to be part of some of the chords. So here's an example of me playing my right hand with that in mind, starting with the D chord. There's the F sharp, right? Then up. Here's the F sharp and the C sharp, right? C sharp, F sharp, C sharps again, and then back to our F sharp for our D chord. So once you're ready to start experimenting with different types of chords and different keys, really understand the scale and understand that you have to be ready to sharp and flat some notes on demand. So as you can see, understanding the diatonic scale is important to understand the whole function of chords, knowing which notes you're gonna use, what's sharp, what's flat, what's natural, whatever you need. It's an essential part of the whole process. Now here's one important thing to consider with chords. I know that a lot of beginners have a hard time placing all the fingers down at the same time. Sometimes they can only get the third finger, sometimes they can only get the third and the first, or the fifth and the third. It causes a lot of issues for some people. So if you're a beginner and your hands are still developing, it might help to just play maybe the outside fingers, fingers one and five first, and then add the third finger, or you can do it in the reverse. I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. So I see a lot of times with new students that their hands are not quite developed. They're not sure how to feel the three fingers going down at the same time. Like this actually would be a little difficult for them. So what I have my students do sometimes is actually start with the third finger like so, 
and then put the other two fingers down. And then go up. So as you can see, it's the same notes as before, but we're taking our time making sure we can feel all the keys at the right time and then come in with the other one so we can hear the whole chord together. You can also do this in reverse. For example, you can start with finger one and five and then the third finger comes down second like so. One note I do wanna make, when you first push the key, for example, like this, and you press the next key, don't let the other two keys go. They have to stay down. Otherwise, you don't form a chord. The sound just goes to a single note, and that's not what you want. So if you're pretty diligent about putting these exercises together, you'll be really comfortable playing chords. It's all about being patient and developing. Now, as much as I love chords, I understand it doesn't make sense to just play them aimlessly in any kind of order. They need to go in a specific chord progression. By the way, if you wanna know how to play some really cool chord progressions, check this video out here. But for now, while you're here, I wanna show you a couple of chord progressions you can try right now to make use of these chords so you can see how you can make beautiful music at the piano with it. So let's get into the first one. So one thing I wanna point out, we never just play chords just for the sake of playing them. They have to have some sort of significance to them. So to form the one chord, we start on the first chord of the C uh, diatonic scale, right? Which is C, E, and G. Then we have four, which is gonna be, right? One, two, three, four. That starts on F. Five is here, right, on G. And then back to our one chord, which is C, E, and G. To make it a little more interesting, I'm going to just double the single notes in the left hand of our chords, just the root notes. So I'll play C, F, G, and C in this hand, but I'll hold chords here, and I'll make a little bit of a rhythmic change so we can have some pattern. So here's what that sounds like. I can vary it as well, right? I can go ahead and break my chords up like we did earlier in the video, like this. So that's one chord progression that you can try. But now let's try out this other one which completely changes the mood. So another chord progression I like to use is the minor six, major four, major one. You hear this in a lot of pop music. So it sounds just like this. Minor six, right? That's on the A, because that's the sixth note of the C major. F is our fourth note, right? Our fourth chord. And of course C major since that is the root or the one chord. So I'm gonna add some rhythmic variety in this hand. I'm gonna add some supporting notes here and you'll see how I put this together now. Now there's actually a lot more that we can do with those chords to make it a little less walled off and stationary and that involves inversions, but I'll talk to you about that in a second. So if you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video. That way I know. And of course, if you have any thoughts on this video, make sure you leave a comment, that way I can get back to you. All right, so let's think about everything we've done so far. We've understood diatonic scales. We've understood how to practice the chords with certain fingers to build strength in the fingers. We talked about blocking your chords, breaking your chords, and even progression. Now we're gonna put your chords in what I like to call the triad sequence, which means you use all the notes of the chord, playing them in different inversions. I've talked about inversions elsewhere on this channel, but right now I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in detail so that you know exactly what to do. So let's get into it. So one key thing that I don't see talked about enough is inversions, especially of triads. There's a triad sequence I like to use which involves playing the root position, the first inversion, the second version, and then back to the root position. So when you play the root position, we already know this, right? That's just where we're at, stationary. In order to invert this, the key that is in the middle becomes your bottom key, the key that's up top becomes your second key, and the key on the bottom here becomes your top key. So watch how I shift my hand from C, E, G to E, G, C. Same three notes, different order. When I wanna do this inversion now, same thing. G becomes the bottom. C becomes the second note, E becomes the top. And then of course, same logic here. Now we're back to our root. So what you have is root, 
first inversion, second inversion, and then root. So once you're comfortable doing all of these inversions in each part of your diatonic chord sequence, then you can start adding some harmonies here within the same key. So I'll just add a C in the bottom so you can see. Go up. Go up. You can also do this in blocked form as well, like this. Then up. Then up. So yes, this method is a little bit more advanced at this point. You wanna make sure that you have your chords really well under your fingers before you jump to this stage. So as you can see, inversions are a little more technical, but just playing them alone is not enough. If you wanna get really good at these chords, you need to make sure that you're adding some harmonies in the other hand, building a sort of accompaniment so you know how to balance the melody with the background music. So I'll show you how to do a couple simple things using the chord progressions we talked about earlier. So going back to our old chord progression we had earlier with the minor six, major four, major one, I want you to see how I play this in different positions now. I start with some inversions, I'll mix in some root positions, and you'll see just how versatile it makes things. So here's our example. So as you saw there at the end, I added even the whole triad sequence at one point in block form. Sometimes I broke it apart. It's really awesome what you can do once you have a great grip on how to play piano chords. So there you have it. That's exactly what I would do if I was a beginner, just getting used to chords, trying to understand how these things work. So when you play chords in different styles, whether that's breaking them apart, creating a melody, or adding harmonies, it truly immerses you in the music that you're trying to learn. And remember, these principles work in all the keys, not just C major. You can do it in D major, you can do it in G major. You can do it in minor modes too, if you're feeling comfortable with that as well, and you're really looking for a serious mood change in your music. So make sure you come back to this video, rewind it, pause it, replay parts, and practice with it every day so you can start getting more solid with your chords. And of course, leave a comment and let me know how things are working for you. By the way, if you wanna learn more about how to make your chords more exciting, how to change harmonies, and how to add rhythms, make sure you check these two videos out. I think you're gonna find them very helpful.